Hey y'all, what's up? It's another episode of Notable Prisons and the Inmates that Occupy Them. <sighs> I need y'all get y'all's lighters ready. Because dude in this video, he cooked himself. Let me tell you. So, let me just give you a little backdrop. Oh, first, listen, listen. Drop something in the comments, man. I like, you know, I like, I like the conversations. Also, subscribe. But anyways, so here's a little backdrop. This is my reaction to the video, first off. Some of you may have seen it. Some of you may have it. But anyways, cut to the chase. So in Las Vegas, back in the day, probably like 2011, you know, they are doing the undercover drug stings and whatnot. And, you know, they're, they've came across a couple of dummies who didn't know what they was doing. And they thought they were going to pull a fast one. With inter what's interesting about this is because I myself have been robbed on two occasions uh, back in the day. More than seven years ago, you know what I mean? Um, I got robbed for a half ounce, and I got robbed for 12 pounds. Now, what it was, it, that that that's neither here nor there. But that's the weight of what it was for me. So watching these videos, just you know, you just see the little signs and everything. But um, yeah, so that's the backdoor story. These uh, The guys, they were trying to um, allegedly purchase something, but then it turns into a robbery. But anyways, I'm going to roll the video. Well, I'm going to turn the audio up and yeah, we're going to get into this video. All right, girl, there's three people in the uh, Chevy Vale, three people in the car. Park in front of the van, uh, just north of that gray van. Chris is coming up to uh, car. It's a white bus stain. Come on. See you soon, bro. What's up? What's up? I'm a usual guy, but then he... F For those of you that have not dibbled and dabbled into the, uh, you know, I guess, suppose the underworld or whatever. If you, you, the one thing you learned that I learned from my past experiences of getting robbed is the body language says so much. Like, you know, when the dude hops in the car, why he shouldn't have been on the phone for one. So you should have known something was up. And for two, dude don't even look like he deals with any type of like, you know, like big weight or nothing for what this lady was asking for. He kept telling me six and I was like, hey, you know, can you do it for 55? And they're like, yeah, I can do it for 55, no problem. Hey, we think we're still waiting on the main supplier, Mike. So uh, we'll see what happens if he's got the D or not. This guy right here, I just met him. There he is. I met him at a rave once. I used to have a car like that, like Trans Am. Silver Trans Am. You know, it kind of reminds me of, I knew this dude uh, in the area I grew up in, in Southern California. Hell, I'll just say it, um, Temecula. Um, I had knew a dude that used to wear a hat kind of like that, but he would tilt the bill up more. And he stole my damn zong I had, man. I, man, I was so hot. Oh, my goodness. It, ugh. Anyways, let's get back to it. It's parked nose in to our girl. Can you do me a favor? And, like, go get me a sample. I just want to make sure it's okay. I don't know if he'll do that. He might get sketched. Like, he really might. Well, but... dude, last time I got ripped off for 30. So, oh, no, these are, these are way two different people. Oh, I know, I know. But he'll understand. Unpopular opinion. I was never a fan of those damn Trans Ams. I thought the things looked so funny. Like, there were so many other doper cars of that era. Okay. You know I got the money. You know I got the money. So you've seen it. Uh, the UC told him last time she was ripped off, so she doesn't want to give up the money. All right. Okay. And then just like, for from their perspective, her language and like this thing she says and how her body language now she's talking and how clean that damn car is. You know, it's just little things that shows red flags. Like, yeah, this might be twelve, man. This might be twelve. You know, you know, I'm trying. I'm trying to view it from both angles. Okay, let's let's get to it. We got more more to come. Hey, he just said that. I was like, she wants a sandwich. He said, you know, I'll just go deal with her. So that's him. His name's Mike. Oh, okay. I guess he's just gonna come see you. Hold on. So I'll see you next time. All right, I'll call you. All right. Thanks, man. Sounds like a main guy is getting in our girl's car. He's got a uh, black briefcase. <sighs> Can you guys guess what I'm going to comment on right now? 
Why is he telling her the name of the plug? That is not none of her business. Like, that is crazy. Like, that's insane. I don't know what they're doing over there in Vegas, but let me tell you, in California, you know, you ain't finna meet too many trappers who finna tell you, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, what's the name I could use? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Billy Go-Go. Yeah, that's Billy Go-Go in the car. Like, no, no one's gonna do that. What's up? How's it going? It's good. Lisa. Chris. Nice to meet you, Chris. Yeah, You're a Chris, they, too? They call me Matt. Cool, cool. So do you actually have the cash for it? I do have cash for it. Yeah. This guy, he jumps out with a damn briefcase. Bro, this is not the 1980s. Trappers these days, they got the fanny packs or they got a simple backpack. You're walking over with a damn briefcase knowing good and damn well you ain't got no lo uh, laptop and you ain't got no briefings inside of that motherfucker. You have my stuff? Yes, I do. All right. Can I take a peek and I'll get you your cash? Uh, what do you, uh, how many are you looking for? You're going to find The boat? Yeah. You're not a cop, are you? No, I'm not a cop. I got to ask. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm hell lit. Watch for the runner. He's got his so you look for a train for like 17 names. The dude with the hat called him Mike. He's calling himself Chris and Matt. They could have at least been on the same accord if they're going to use fake names. But one thing I must point out, peep how he's in the car with that door open. You're not going to make a play or feel comfortable making a play if someone gets in the car with their door open. Your, 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 your antennas should be going, you know. I know my antennas will be going, but... Obviously, she's undercover. She don't understand how street shit works. This dude. All right, we're just going to do it like this. Just give me your money. Just give me your money? I'm not kidding. You. Okay. Well, it's in the trunk. Huh? No, it's in your purse. Give me the money. Dude, what is this? I like talking. Give me the money now. I don't have to do it. Look how hard he's breathing. His heart is about to jump out his chest. He got the lame-ass incognito glasses on that look like he's a damn, I don't know, like secret agent man or something like that you know oh my goodness just look at this guy like his body language you could just tell all in this like what's gonna happen well i can just take your whole purse it sounds like he's ripping her move in you got a few seconds. all right yeah take the whole purse take the whole purse whatever dude all right hands up hands up hands up yes ah, and for the record Asking a cop if he's a cop is like the dumbest thing in the world because it doesn't matter if they say they're a cop or not. What you would, what you're supposed to do is, I don't know, I'm just assuming, you ask the cop to engage in something that a cop wouldn't engage in. Here, hit this blunt. Or something, 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 something. You could get creative, you know? Uh... You get creative, but that's just, that doesn't matter. That doesn't mean nothing. The cops are always going to, are you a cop? No, of course they're going to say no. You think they're going to say, yeah, I'm a cop? No. See, he's slow. And, oh, I was about to say, why is he in a damn Honda? But they're undercover. Sorry. Get your hands behind your back now. I'm sorry. Get your hands behind your back. Somebody grab that veil. Find that veil. Get that veil. Stop. They gave me, they, sir, they, I'm just saying, sir. They gave, me a, they gave me a gun and told me if I didn't do it, that they were going to kill me. I promise you, sir. Oh, my goodness. This guy, he... he, 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 he. Oh, man. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. So, let me tell y'all, the one time that I got robbed, I went, I'll eventually tell this story, but... How when they pulled their gun on me, they was quick with it and they was up front, like in my face. Give it to me. Let me have it. And it was only for a half ounce of shake. <laughs> they told me that they were going to kill me. Thank God they're going to kill me. <laughs> I'll tell you exactly who it was, sir. I promise you. Oh, he's saying that he was forced to do it. He's out here crying like a baby, you know. And uh, uh, we took down the secondary vehicle just around the block from here and Everything went down safe. Everybody's cool. I know Chris. He was just like, hey, can you do me a favor? I was like, yeah. He's like, run me as Smith. So he said he was just going to buy a couple grams a week. And that was it. And then when I get in the car, he pulls a gun on me, tells me straight up. He goes. <laughs> he got 
confiscated from that damn Mustang. No, he got removed. He got removed in the most... Uh, Man, it would, hold on. Let's just keep watching. You're going to do this for me. He's like, I will kill you. He's like, I know where you live. Everything like that. I didn't want to go through with it at all, sir. I really didn't. I was scared out of my mind. Sorry, just, sorry to cuss at you. I'm really sorry. When did they pull the gun on you and tell you to do that? About 30 minutes ago, sir. 40 About, minutes ago. Okay. What are they saying? Our main guy, Chris, basically admitted. Now, this is what we do on this page. When we see these dudes that like to act like they really living like that, and they really steppers and all that, you know what we do when they start crying? We fire up, and we laugh at them. Get your lighters ready. I want y'all to know, I've searched so hard to try to find this dude's name because I was going to air him out in this video, but I couldn't find his damn name. So if y'all know who dude is, drop it below in the comments. But let's, let's just, everyone just laugh at this guy as he's crying and telling on his friend. The whole thing says that he had to deal with our UC for the boat, couldn't come up with it, came down here, explained it to the suspect that's over there, the guy that tried to rob him. Oh, he's crying like a big baby. Big giant baby, capital B. Man, he was crying louder than my baby. And my baby's too. Damn crybaby snitching ass motherfucker. And uh, uh, we took down the secondary vehicle just around the block from here. And everything went down safe. Everybody's cool. I know Chris. He was just like, hey, can you do me a favor? I was like, yeah. He's like, run me a Smith. He said he was just going to buy a couple grams of weed. And that was it. And then when I get in the car, he pulls a gun on me. I want y'all to know something. I don't believe a damn thing he says. Any person who vividly tells on a friend that they are committing, that they are trapping with, you cannot believe another word to come out that man's mouth. I do not believe anything he is saying. None of that happened. He's trying to get himself up out of there. Because at the end of the day, he was in the car by himself and he could have got on, you know? He had his briefcase. He knew what he was doing. He thought he was about to go handle some business. But look, the business handled him. You know, and if dude was really that gangster, for one, the dude that got in the car first, he didn't look like a threat. You know, you would if you seen these two dudes on the streets, you would think that dude with the pointy sideburns could whoop him. Secondly, if he told you that, you have there's one or two things you could do if you live if you you know if you're a street dude you can handle it go about it that way or if you're a normal person a civilian you could go and call these people you know but I'm just saying if dude told you he was gonna come to your house man you were supposed to sit there and wait for him like Tony Montana bro I'm just saying you know if you a street dude and you living like that now this guy apparently is a fraud he over here telling and everything.